Hi guys, Boris here at your College Design Studio, and I've got kind of an embarrassing uh, admission to make. Uh, we have a mic here in the studio, and I've been talking into it uh, the entire time for the past two tutorials that I made today, and uh, it's been recording from the webcam the entire time. So, uh, kind of feels silly, and I finally uh, I was wondering why the audio didn't sound. Uh, as, as crisp and clean as it should have uh, and I, I checked the settings and uh, lo and behold I was using the wrong audio input so that's fixed uh, hopefully you can hear me a little bit better uh, and clearer today we're taking a look at Adobe Fireworks a very interesting very useful program I love it a lot I use it for um, th the main thing I use it for is uh, image optimization when I'm uh, building websites but today I'm going to show you how I created the Ecology Designs logo and uh, later on there's going to be a practice document on our website where you can practice using the pen tool uh, in Adobe Fireworks uh, or in Photoshop or any of the other Adobe products uh, the pen tool is a very useful feature but it's not very intuitive how to use um, so hopefully that that will um, help help you um, practice and, and clear up some confusion. So let's get started. Uh, I don't actually remember exactly what we did for your College of Designs logo, so I'm going to wing it. Um, but I'm going to go through the steps. So right here where it says Donut, I went ahead and clicked on that. Um, center it as best you can. Or actually, you see how I did that? It's in a box. It's been a while since I've done this. Imagine a box and a circle inscribed inside of that box. Whenever you're drawing uh, a shape like that, always picture it um, in a square of some type. And then start at the top of the square, drag down to where you want the bottom of the square to be. Just like that. And now we have a circle inscribed within it. Uh, I'm going to select the sub-selection tool and that's going to allow me to select specific um, parts of this as you can see I can I can move it about I can I can change it what I want to do is I want to change the diameter of this of this circle to change the radius of the inner circle uh, we don't want to select the the sub selection tool we want to select the main uh, pointer tool and double click on any one of these points and then click and drag see that right there just like that then select the paint bucket tool um, select any color you want I'm gonna select green and purple hey look at that uh, never mind bucket tool green and there it is well I want to add some effects to it make it um, a little fuzzy and I'm gonna do that at the bottom here and the properties um, there's a lot of stuff you can you can use and, and it gives you a preview for example dots uh, you can do that mm, I forgot which one I used, but I think it was grass or and just a lot of options let me take a look there you go burlap I'm gonna, I'm gonna select that and then stay with it now the outer edge the the outer borders I don't know if you can see that here it's it's green so it's kinda hard to blend but I want it to be kinda fiery orange um, and you can you can kinda see it I have to make it a little bit bigger so now is the time when I select the sub selection tool uh, up to the top here and then I select very gently um, not the green but come on work with me here there you go the outer uh, border the inner and outer border if you select one of them you select both of them and as you can see here the color is orange it's hard to see because it's very small this gives you the size one pixel um, I can bump it up to a hundred I want it to be somewhere around tw whoa not 20 <laughs> somewhere probably around three or two there you go around two and I don't want it to be 
a hard border I want it to be hmm charcoal soft now I can bump up the pixels a little bit uh, maybe a little bit less there you go that's that's okay it doesn't look quite exactly like their college designs logo uh, it, we took several different steps um, working on it but this is close enough now that we have this preliminary image uh, drawn up I want to briefly go over what we're actually looking at here on the screen and what we have is the canvas that's the main thing that really stands out uh, that's basically your main area uh, of work you can change the color the size uh, the resolution and the position of it um, use control plus or control minus to zoom in or zoom out the next one we have is the tools panel um, over here you have the selections the, the bitmaps the vectors the pen tool is one of them uh, and it's by far the most useful one uh, followed by the text tool web color and view so basically as you, as you can see they're organized by category down at the bottom we have the property inspector um, it's uh, this it displays properties of selected objects and relevant commands so as I showed you if I click on the border it's gonna it's gonna show you the properties of both the inner circle that's green and uh, the outer one maybe soft isn't quite the best one I'm gonna use textured that's pretty horrible too so let's change it to yellow there you go it's not too bad um, and the menu bar at the very top here you can access different menu commands um, batch command demo uh, resize take a look at what you have play around with it a little bit depending on your projects again if you have any questions or comments uh, definitely let us know uh, now I want to show you something else what we're going to do is we're going to delete this beautiful piece of art we just created uh, apparently it wants us to select the entire thing it's a vector image so there's, there's many points of interest there and now we're going to learn about the pen tool uh, very soon there will be a document you can use to follow along so we're going to talk about a straight line find a point anywhere on the canvas click uh, you can lift the mouse button or you can hold the mouse button um, what I do is I, I, I let go the grid line here uh, allows you to snap to the grid and then double click to close it off and bam we have a fuzzy textured charcoal green looking line now we'll do a curved line um, anywhere again on the map find a point click find another point say for example here click and hold and then drag in a direction where you want the curve to be so I want a subtle curve kind of like this kind of like an S right there and as you can see you still have a curve here a line here and it's it's going to curve or it's going to be straight depending on how you want to do it I want it to curve and end up right here and I'm going to double click to finish the line okay kind of a shoddy looking S or a weaving path but like again play with it play around with it and um, see what kind of interesting shapes you can come up with to draw a closed shape uh, I'm gonna draw a square or an oval or something um, click on the original point I'm gonna go for a curved triangle like this and where it's curving like that maybe it's a beaker and then double click to close so basically you click on the original point you click on the second point uh, and hold and drag in the direction of the curve you click to close the next point and then if you want to create a straight line you basically return back to the original point and double click um, if you're looking to create a closed image and then you can use the bucket tool and fill it in with a color that way you don't fill out the rest of the canvas if you're not if you're not looking to do that control Z to undo 
or you can go to edit uh, undo pen tool control Z redo is control Y and I'd like to take a quick minute to give you a background on what's going on with the pen tool uh, the lines that connect the vectors in, in a graphic called paths and the software uses these paths to create a description of the object you're creating in a mathematical way uh, as a formula and to make the shape appear on the screen uh, you use attributes um, like the fill or the stroke the fill is the color or the pattern that, that fills the the object that's enclosed by the path and the stroke is basically the the width of the line or the color of the line that's that's painted on top of the path um, it's it you can't have a shape without a stroke or without a fill um, and then it can be invisible and those kinds of shapes you can use to guide text so for example if you use the text tool to create and we'll take a look at this here in a, in a quick second if you use the text tool to type in a title or the name of a business or of a person and you, you, you wonder you know how can I make it as an art you know I, I want it to not be in a straight line but I want it to fold a uh, shape well you can use an invisible circle and attach the text join the text to that circle and it's going to follow um, the, sh the stroke or the f I'm getting um, mixed up in terminology here but it's going to follow the, the shape of the object you draw so if you draw a, sh a circle and you put the text somewhere on it it's going to appear like an arc and the user can't see the circle after you make your image they can only see the text that's curved let's take a look at how we do that really quickly okay what I've done is I've changed the color on my palette to black and I would very much like to change it to not to grain but to solid if I can okay kinda like this and I'm going to select not that it's gonna matter it's gonna be an invisible shape I'm going to select the ellipse tool or you can press U to cycle through it as you, as you can see um, there's a variety of, of different shapes you can use there and I'm going to draw a circle I don't want that circle to be visible so I'm going to click here on the pen icon and I'm going to select the white square with the red arrow through it transparent button now that circle is transparent and if I use the the pointer tool and click away oh bam it disappears but if I you know uh, highlight the things on my screen it's gonna show up well we actually want it to be invisible let's take the text tool and type in well the hello world why not the all familiar saying okay so now what we want to do is we want to select hello world and the circle and join them together we can press uh, text up at the menu commands and attach to path you can also press control shift and Y and bam there it is hello world now follows um, a circular pattern or an arc pattern if you click away the circle becomes invisible and you just have text that's curved um, that provides you with a lot of flexibility in what you can do when you're designing logos or images banners posters or whatever projects you're working on as the text you don't have to constrain yourself to linear text you can warp and attach text to different images you have um, on the canvas or you can create invisible images and uh, use that as guidelines so if you you can, you can try to twist um, the shape in different uh, in different directions for now though we just want to rotate um, the image and what I'm doing is I'm pressing and holding control so press and hold control when you have the, the object or the two objects selected um, actually just click and control once is gonna do it too now that I that I look at it and then you can you can use the when you get to the corner if you use this it's gonna stretch it uh, but if you get if you highlight it and press control it's control T actually control T 
you press Control T once, and now you have the ability to rotate this image around and around and around. I'm going to center it, kind of like this, and I'll move it more to the center like this. And then to click away, simply select the pointer tool. And there it is, hello world, all nice and curved. One thing that we have not covered yet in this tutorial, and I'll probably uh, save it for a different uh, tutorial session, is this right side here of the panel where you look at layers. Uh, it's very interesting, especially when you're working with a lot of different vectors uh, or complicated images, and even not so complicated images that have multiple components. Um, and you can use this to rearrange the layer, not only to rearrange the layering, but to create uh, an illusion of depth in uh, three, uh, three dimensions. You can split an image into two different images and then change the transparency in the layer level. You can stack images on top of one another and adjust certain parameters. Um, and um, again, the transparency of, of how they appear and how they permeate throughout the image. Or you can simply change the way they blend with the layers above and beneath them to create different effects. And that will be on a different part of a series, um, in our tutorial series. Um, for now, I think this brings us to the end of today's video. I'm trying to keep it um, you know, relatively short. Uh, thank you guys for watching. If you have any questions or comments, please don't hesitate to contact us and we'll get back to you. Um, and I'll see you next time on our Ecology Designs production.